Hey guys, welcome to the channel today. I wanted to share with you this Omega Seamaster 300. Uh, this was lent to me by a friend of mine here in Utah. So uh, big thanks to you, Danny. I really appreciate you letting me spend some time with this beautiful diver. This is not to be confused with the Seamaster Professional that most people think of when they think of a Seamaster. This one is a newer model that came out in 2014. And it's based off of orig uh, Omega's original diver, their Seamaster. That, that debuted in 1957. So I'll drop a picture of that here on the screen. And you can see visually, they did a great job of sticking to those aesthetic cues. It's very true to that original design with the thinner bezel, the um, beautiful broad arrow hands, the angular lugs, the coin edging. I think they did a really good job of staying true to that design, but also updating with some really good innovation and bring it truly making this a modern watch. So it's got some really good tech. The bezel is made out of their proprietary liquid metal alloy. So it's very corrosive and very scratch resistant. It has a beautiful gloss finish to it that looks like that original acrylic that was on the 1957 version. My favorite update and the thing that I think they did the best job on is this beautiful movement, this Omega coaxial caliber 8400 that you can see through this display case back. And I'll get more into that later. But the watch as a whole has some really nice details that to me show me that Omega, the designers at Omega were really trying to get this one right. And in my opinion, they succeeded. If we get up close with the dial, you'll see that it does have a very nice texture to it. It's a textured dial. And even that silver tone printing of the 12, 3, 6, and 9, and then the text that says Master Coaxial Chronometer is even got a little bit of reflectance to it. Very fine little details. My favorite part about the dial, though, is that sandwich construction. So those indices, those are actually cut out and set below the surface, the black surface of that dial. It's a great touch. It really looks good in person. You have an oyster-style bracelet, slightly tapering, very hefty, very comfortable on the wrist. This is a shot of it on my 7.25 inch wrist. It, it sits nicely and you can tell that this is quality. Now, my favorite part about the bracelet is gonna be the clasp. You have a push button release, very nice. Um, and then on the back here, you can see where it says push. That engages a ratcheting extension. So there's a few different positions that you can increase or decrease the length of the bracelet on the fly. I, I like things like that, especially on a dive watch. Now let's talk about that movement. Here we have the Cal 8400. This is a newer coaxial caliber from Omega. It's completely in-house and it's one of their very first master chronometers. It's got some really awesome specs. You know, apart from being just a gorgeous movement, it's technically impressive. So it's anti-magnetic to 15,000 Gauss, which is crazy. Rolex's Milgauss is 1,000 Gauss. This is uh, rated to 15 times that amount. And that's due to a few reasons. The biggest one is gonna be the silicone hairspring that you see oscillating there on the balance wheel. Uh, really good to see that here. Uh, you, a couple other companies do use a silicone hairspring, but Omega has started to do that exclusively with their calibers. Uh, looking at that balance wheel, you'll, you'll notice it is a free sprung balance wheel. With, uh, that's in a full balance bridge. I love seeing that movement architecture. It's robust and it's just so nice aesthetically. It's got a new shock absorber, you know, not KIF or Inkablock, which you normally see on a Swiss watch. Uh, this is made by Niverox and it's called the, the Niva Shock Absorber. And it's supposed to be more shock absorbing than, than KIF or, or Inkablock. So impressed to see that. Your rotor here, your automatic rotor, it spins on ceramic ball bearings. Again, that's an uncommon detail. You don't see that in a lot of watches. And then you'll notice here, you can see it's, it's etched in there. It's, it's labeled barrel one and barrel two. You've got two barrels that hold the juice to the movement. So you get a full 60 hours of power reserve. And my favorite part, this was really surprising to me. I'll just show you. Um, if you unscrew the crown, this has a screw down crown because this has 300 meters of water resistance. Nice action to the crown. You pull it out to the first position. You'll notice that the second hand has not hacked, but there's also no date wheel. 
So if I turn it in this direction, I've got, I engage a jumping hour feature, which I think is awesome. So it's great for traveling and adjusting the time zone on the fly. It goes forwards and backwards. And again, it doesn't hack the movement. So it's a really nice detail to see on this watch. Now let me show you something else I enjoy. This box here is, <laughs> it's really nice. It's a large wooden lacquered box with the uh, push button medallion opening feature here. You can see very nice hardware, nice leather interior. And then it also has this uh, flip up feature to where you can um, you know, stash extra links, warranty card, jewelry. Sorry, this one still has the uh, silicone in there. Here's a travel bag. I, I, I don't know, it, it's, it's not anything to do with the watch. It's just a really nice extra to have. I like the attention to detail uh, that Omega paid, not only to the watch, but a very nice presentation box. Okay, so let's talk about the negatives. My friend Danny, he told me, be brutal, be honest, and so I will. I think that this watch, it's a little tall, and especially if you wear it on the Omega OEM NATO that he has here, it makes it exceptionally tall on the wrist. And I understand that, that there might be limitations because we, we do have an exhibition case back, and we do have 300 meters of water resistance, but it is a little tall for my taste. The next thing, and this might be a little silly, but if you look at the dial here, does anything stand out to you? I think that seconds hand stands out a little bit too much. Everything on the dial is a little muted, being silver tone, being you know old radium loom, being black or silver, but that seconds hand to me just looks too white. It's a little bit stark in relation to the rest of the dial and I understand that's legible, but I don't know. I, I think it would be good if it was, you know, a little bit muted, if it matched the the silver tone of the 12, 3, 6, and 9 a little bit more. The last thing is, you'll notice there is a lot of polished surfaces. Your center link, your top of your lugs there. It, I mean, it's a beautiful watch, but that will attract smudges and you will see scratches a little bit more. Now, my friend, he says he wears this hard as he's taken this in the Pacific Ocean. And you can tell, I mean, there's a little bit of wear on the clasp. There's a few marks in the center links and uh, in the polished ring that's inside of that liquid metal bezel. There's a couple marks in there. I'm proud of him. <laughs> Danny, thanks for wearing a tool watch the way it's supposed to be worn. Even if it is a little bit more of a dressy tool watch, it's nice to see people properly using their sports pieces. So it is a con in the fact that it will show wear and fingerprints a little bit easier but I'm, I, I still think it looks good, even used. Now the last thing, the criticism you hear most often online is that Omega chose to use the old radium color loom. It's kind of that creamy tan color. And I was in that camp initially. I'll tell you what, after spending time, you know, a couple weeks with this watch, wearing it, I, I've changed. I really like the radium loom. Now, the reason that is, is like I said, this is a very beautiful watch. You know, you've got the ceramic bezel, you've got all the polished links, and it, it, it's a sharp watch, and it pops in person. It plays with light really well. If this was white, if this was stark white, I think that would be maybe a little bit ostentatious. I like the fact that this is slightly muted. I think it looks a little bit more elegant that way. You may disagree, you may think it looks silly. I, I tell you what, after spending time with it, I really like it, and the quality of the loom is actually quite nice. So it's all of that, all of that is the radium tone, but at night, everything is blue, except for your minute hand and then your bezel pip, which is green. I love the way Omega uses the bicolor loom in their watches. So what's the verdict? In the end, I think this is a really nice watch. I like that Omega, did this properly. They didn't force a date wheel on here. They didn't just slap white tone loom on here. They, <laughs> I think they really thought this out. You may disagree with me, but I think they did a really nice job and I'm impressed with it. The execution is top notch. And again, that tech is amazing. This movement is really impressive. It's not just beautiful, but technically it's very, very impressive. So I think they did a great they did a great job and this retails at $6600 at an AD so that's really pricey 
Pre-owned prices, um, about 4,000, a little bit less. And gray market new is 4,000 right now. So, you know, it's, it's not a cheap watch. It's not a cheap diver and it has competition in its price point. You know, if you're spending 4,000, what are you looking at? You're looking at probably a Tudor Pelagos, um, maybe a 30 year old Rolex Submariner. You're more expensive than your Black Bay. Um, where are you at? You're, you're looking at uh, Planet Ocean from Omega. Again, a nice watch. I prefer this one. And then the only other one I can think of is like the Breitling Super Ocean, which is a tribute to Breitling's very first diver. And between the two, I would definitely pick this Omega. I know there's a lot of Super Ocean Heritage fans and friends of mine, but this has more impressive tech and I think is a better execution. I'm really, I'm really liking this watch. Everything about it, you know, the crown action, Sorry, that's not the crown. The bezel action, really good actually. Better than any Omega I've tried. And then your crown action again is very smooth. With good positions. Quality watch, what can I say? It's a very quality watch. This has the tech, this has the beauty, this has the heritage. And it's from a respectable brand. So I've really enjoyed my time. Danny, thanks again. You're awesome. I really appreciate you letting me spend some time with this great watch. Thank you again, my friend. And uh, to all you watching, let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.